Your scientific work is on the home stretch and you just have to write your conclusion. Writing a conclusion is not an art. Rather, it is a technique that you can learn in just a few steps. In this video, I'll give you a guide consisting of seven easy steps on how to write a conclusion for your research paper or thesis that will tip the scales in favor of an outstanding grade. And now, Without further ado, welcome to Shrive. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. Let's clarify one more thing. What is a conclusion good for anyway? Sometimes instead of conclusion, the terms resume or outlook appear in the academic vocabulary. To cut to the chase, a conclusion is meant to be an evaluative summary of your work. It is one of the main pillars of an academic paper and requires a lot of attention. In the conclusion, you are required to present the results of your work and demonstrate your reader why your work was sensationally good. Remember, the conclusion of your paper is usually read last. Accordingly, it is the part of the work that will be remembered. Now let's start with a rough outline for a conclusion. In my opinion, this is the way to go. First, a summary of your findings. Then, the answers to the research questions summarized. Added value for science, theory or the seminar. Added value for practice, if applicable. Limitations, followed by recommendations for further research. Now let's dive into an exact guide on how to address each point. Step 1. Identify the audience of your work. First of all, you should be aware of whom you address. This also applies to the rest of your text, of course. If you are not preparing a research paper for an international conference or journal, the only reader, with the exception of your mom, is your lecturer or professor. When writing your conclusion, imagine how you will sell your research results to your professor. Accordingly, you should not tell her anything that she already knows, and that would bore her. Rather, you can make it your task to convince her of a real added value of your work for her field of research. If your paper relates to a specific seminar or course, reflect on the results in light of the topics covered during the semester and place them in a meaningful overall context. Step 2. Write your conclusion on a meta level. Just like the introduction, the conclusion should be approached a bit differently than the main body. Instead of moving on with your content, you should zoom out and write about writing in these parts of the paper. This means that you do not add any new sources or any sources for that matter or insights in your conclusion except for limitations and recommendations for future research. A conclusion only refers to the findings you have already written down in the main body of your paper such as in the results and discussion sections. Step 3. Summarize your results. Now we come to the actual content of your conclusion. Start with some introductory words and explain what you are going to do in the following, but very briefly. Also explain why you are doing it. For example, you will summarize the main points of the results discussed above in order to make them explicit with regard to the research question. Also. When writing a conclusion, this step is helpful in placing your findings in the context of the research gap you identified at the beginning. A even better than a research gap would be an identified research problem. Do not proceed chronologically in your summary so that the reader does not get too bored. Try to restate your findings along the lines of your argument and the idea of your paper. Step 4. Close all open loops. One of the most important steps is to concisely repeat the answer to the research question you posed at the beginning. In doing so, you must abstract your results to such an extent that they point purposefully to the problem of your work in just a few sentences. Explain your results in an understandable way and explain how they build on existing literature. Before we proceed with step 5, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video. Scribber. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. 
just have a look at scribber.com and send me a short email to info at shrap.eu for an exclusive coupon code. Step 5. Sell the added value of your results. The idea behind research papers always implies creating added value or contributions for the scientific community. In a thesis or term paper this principle can be practiced. Therefore you should try to carve out a unique contribution even if your work is just a paper that only your lecturer will ever read. The closer you get to the principle and requirements of scientific work, the better your grade will be in the end. How do you convince a reader of your contributions? Argue how your work and its results could be useful for theory, the general state of knowledge, individuals, organizations or society. It is common to distinguish between added value or contributions for theory and knowledge and contributions for practice. Practical implications also depend on the field of study. Work in technical fields or business administration often has a higher relevance for practice. In contrast, humanities scholars often work within the boundaries of a scientific debate. If your work can do both, all the better. Step 6. Explain limitations. Again, we are at the meta level, reflecting on our own work. When writing your conclusion, point out any hurdles that stood in the way of your work. For example, did you not have access to certain data? Was your sample small but justifiable for the scope of this work? Did you only look at one set of facts, for example a case study, and lack a means of comparison? Be honest, but don't completely pick apart your work. After all, you want to sell it as outstanding. In addition, you should not invent any limitations, but at best have made notes on them during your work. The limitations should be plausible but not caused by your own fault. A good way to deal with limitations is to refer to further research opportunities. Which brings us to step 7. Make recommendations for further research. Finally, you can give a preview of what other areas you would like to explore in further work, even if you never work on this topic again. Suggest which studies, methods and open questions could be addressed in the future. This not only shows your interest, but also demonstrates foresight and competence. Bonus! Miscellaneous questions. What length should you aim for when writing the conclusion? As always, the length of the conclusion should be based on the length of the entire work. About 10% of the text. If possible, the steps we just discussed should be addressed in the suggested order. Subheadings are rather unusual, but recommended in a thesis with a very long conclusion. Now you are left with one very last sentence that you can use to be remembered forever. Choose a strong statement that will leave a lasting impression.